Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here. Now, if you hadn't already heard, Nintendo may be venturing into the film business. President Asumi Kimishima revealed in an interview recently that the firm is looking into the possibility, and considering how bright, colourful, cheery, deep and downright tasty its IPs are, it seems like a good move. As such, we've chosen five Nintendo franchises that we think would be absolutely tip-top for the film industry. So, enough waffling, let's get right into it. Yeah, this obviously had to be included. Despite having a silent protagonist, The Legend of Zelda lore is deep, immersive, and has huge scope for a film adaptation. So much so that there have been countless rumours, fan films, and more besides that play on the idea of this series getting its moment on the appropriately silver screen. The traditional Zelda story arc would work quite well by itself, but there are also so many other avenues that they could go down. You only have to look at Majora's Mask to see that. Considering the series is already so massively story-driven, we think that this would be the easiest series to adapt into a film. Using a visual style similar to that of the cutscenes in Fates would probably be best suited. A live action of bloke would probably just rub people's jimmies up the wrong way. Can you imagine it though? The hardcore storytelling and relentless brutality of the series squeezed into a two and a half hour long film? Oh, don't tempt me. Whether you're the fly cephalopod on the block or just a damp squid, you cannot deny the success of Splatoon. With its thoroughly intriguing backstory rooted in a post-human world, there's scope of plenty for this series to make its way to the less interactive audiovisual format. The language barrier of all the characters speaking inkling, or English as I prefer to call it, is an issue, but it could also be quite easily worked around with Shaw. Though what exactly they'd use as a plot? <laughs> If the Pikmin shorts have taught us anything, it's that these little critters are bursting with charm. Not that we didn't already know that, of course, but seeing these things fleshed out with a real personality brought a whole new lease of life to the series. But Alex, I hear you screech at me from a passing vehicle. Inklings speak in a fake language, but Pikmin don't speak at all. Very true, but remember the first time you saw Wally and realised that there was basically no speech for the first 40 minutes? Sometimes you just don't need dialogue. For a bit. Before we get on to number one, let's have a quick look at just a few honourable mentions. were inspired by Alien, so why not flip that back around and turn it into a film? The prime example of dread, the fusion of corruption and echoes, the lack of any other puns to make about the game's title, there's so much great stuff in the Metroid series, it'd be perfect to adapt into a film. We don't need bags of characters, we just need Samus fighting off hordes of big scary monsters whilst being stuck on a planet. The atmosphere of the games is already dark, but if it was potentially taken further and developed into something akin to a thriller like the aforementioned franchise about aliens with tiny mouth tongues, Nintendo could show the world that it can do more than just race Mario against his green dino chum. Of course we know it, but the rest of the world, they don't really seem to. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you put that subscribe button's name in lights. Its name is Samantha, by the way. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>